All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Back with more of what I've had to drink yesterday, and it's been a busy first week of the year here of tastings in the store. And uh, Harley was in, one of our guys, uh, used to work for Unfind and Filter. Now he's broken out onto his own, doing his own thing. And, you know, $10 wines usually are not the reason I get out of bed in the morning. But I understand, as a distributor, you have to have them in your portfolio. That's what uh, some people drink every day. I think we have a few things in the store in each category in the $10 to $15 retail price range, but not a lot of really shockingly good wine in that price range. For me, somebody who drinks at a very high level, you know, the Spanish white, uh, the white gorilla, kind of a cool looking label with this bot bottle of Verdejo, but very uh, light and easy drinking, pretty nose, white flowers, papaya, tropical fruit, a hint of banana, kind of odd in there, whetstone, uh, very unique. Uh, some of that banana coming out in the finish there as well, but really just light and easy drinking, um, sweet tart notes to the mineral and mineral on the finish there. And then a few wines from Rioja from Hacienda Lopez de Haro, which I guess that means the wine is close to Haro, but uh, the entry-level wine there, 100% Tempranillo from Old Vines and uh, some bright strawberry fruit there, some fresh flowers, some raw meat notes, but uh, really light, smooth tannins, short, pleasant, not the reason I get out of bed in the morning. The Crianza, not, not much better either, uh, a little Granacho, a little grassy thrown in there, a little more time in uh, American oak, and you notice a little bit of that spice from the oak, but uh, like I said, just um, kind of short and pleasant finish, not really complex. The Tierra Gaucho Malbec, uh, but this time I'm starting to yawn a little bit in this presentation, Harley, but uh, you know, not a bad wine, blackberry, blueberry fruit, notes of black earth, some violence, short and pleasant finish, uh, smooth tannins, uh, really easy drinking wine, uh, $15, there's a lot of competition in that in that uh, Malbec category, though, let me tell you, I hope this is not all we have in the portfolio to sell. Ah, we did have something uh, not exceptional, but I would say, um, you know, pretty good. The DeBarros line, uh, a couple of wines from Ribeiro del Duero to finish off the tasting, which, um, you know, this Romantica Crianza, all these wines had a bit of a roasted character to them. 2009 is a great vintage in Ribera. Wines usually have got a lot of fleshy fruit and wonderful balance. The tan is very ripe and great acidity to them. This wine's got some espresso, some dried meat notes, some of the things you get from Ribera there, some dark cherry fruits, a good amount of ripe uh, sun-dried cherry fruit on the palate as well, some of the meaty notes showing through on the finish. Uh, some chalky tannins coming through on the end there, though. 60-year-old uh, vines, 100% Tempranillo, uh, pretty good little wine for 20 bucks. The uh, Barros M uh, 2006, this wine's got a little bit of age to it, 40-year-old Cabernet, um, which is 10% of the blend, and an 80-year-old Tempranillo, 90% of the blend. Like I said, this wine's all have this kind of roasted coffee, kind of roasted character to them, dark berry fruit, brown spice, vanilla, some meaty notes, some dried earth. Nice concentration on the tongue with this wine. You could tell it's a little developed, that 06 vintage, had a little bit of bottle age to it. Some of that sun-dried fruit and brown spice coming through on the finish as well. Some pencil lead, something you get from the oak there. And then the 2005 DeBarros S. This is the best wine in the lineup, but a little hefty in the pricing category here at around 50 bucks. 9010 Tempranillo and Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, 18 months in oak and a really classic bouquet, the dried meat, the dark cherry fruit, some old leather notes. Again, a little bit of roasted quality there to the nose, but very balanced and polished on the tongue, this 2005 vintage drinking uh, really nicely right now. Good amount of ripe berry fruit, some brown spices, and a zesty finish from toasty oak. Good length on this one. Excellent juice. All right, well, that's what we had to drink with Harley. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off from the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.